Hold on. Um, um, that's um, ironic. What? It's ironic. No, but hold on, right? I'm, I'm, for example, right, You're either myself, a Tim and you stand by it, or you're not. No, but hold on, right? I'm not going this season, right? And I've chose not to give my money to Celtic, right? This season. Now, so, that hurts the club, Tommy. Sorry? That hurts the club. Right, but hold on. I've got, in my family, my daughter's got a ticket, and then there's another two, so we've got two t- season tickets there, right? So, and, uh, yeah, I don't go there. I, I could go, uh, when my, my lass is out working, I could take her ticket and then my boy, he doesn't even want to go now, but if I wanted to do it, I could go. But I just uh, feel that, well, by me, like the, the, we had to hurt our club to save our club back 20 years ago. And so just now I'm what I would class in as a conscientious objector where... I disagree so strongly with the temporary custodians that I don't want to part another penny in their pocket because I feel that they are not treating me as a Celtic fan. I'm just a consumer. And they're, like you said there, they're not living up to the ideals. Uh, I mean, just now they're not representing me as a Celtic fan in a way where I would like them to go over there. And uh, I mean, if it was me there, if I was Peter Lawwell, I would have kept that Celtic plane on the runway at Schiffel and said, we're not leaving here, two our boys are out of the fucking jail. Obviously, that's a simplistic way, but if I was there, I would have jumped back another plane and says, look, we're watching these people out. What have they done that's so wrong? Shoot, the evidence that we've got, the evidence that the world has got, that this Patrick Mullen uh, was innocent. He was attacked and yet he's been languishing in a jail where there's four witnesses from his girlfriend stated that when she was on the other night, that four witnesses said that he never attacked any police officer. So there's an innocent yeah. Celtic fan there. So the board is failing me, right, and it's failing you, and it's failing Sean and everybody else out there, in my opinion, by not representing us, uh, by not putting into the food bank, by not starting their own soup kitchen, by not paying their own staff a oh, living oh, wage, oh, by, telling, by telling their fans uh, don't vote for the resolution to get justice against UEFA. So every step of the way, and then the criminalisation of the Green Brigade, handing my number over to London Road Police to give me a phone call to stop phoning Eleanor. I mean, that's just a small fucking thing, but when you add every bit here... I mean, they're just midnight masses. They're shopping the fans. They're doing everything against us. They're doing nothing for us. And yet, hey, when it comes to cup finals, they'll they'll not give us enough tickets for it. When it comes to European games, they'll sell them quicker to Thompson's or whatever to make their fast bucks. So they're not representing me. They're doing hee-haw for me. So it's a case of starve them off. They're not getting my money. And you know what? See if they don't get another 10,000, 20,000. Yeah, it's going to hurt the PLC. It's going to hurt the team. Well, hey, but they don't spend any money in the team. They've got 20 million in two years uh, Champions League money plus they're sitting there and they've no spent a penny in the team. So, it's, in my opinion, it's, if you want these out and you want proper change, then it's starve them out time. Tommy, I disagree. Does that make me a bad why. fan? Does that make me a worse fan in your opinion? Well, let me say what I was going to say first of all before I answer that question. No, answer that first. I don't think any... Answer that question and make say it first because well, I, I there... certainly will. But let me say what I was going to say first of all. Then I'll come around to that point. Yeah. What I think is this: is that you support the club through thick and thin, and I think the battle of when we had back in the nineties about starving the board out was a different battle scene at that time. And I think the way we went about it was correct in terms of sales for change, etc. Yeah? And let's not forget, at that time, I remember being there in the jungle and then going round the areas. There was a division amongst the fans as well at that time. We were not fully unified. The others thought the guys like Matt McGlone were assholes, which we all know, truthfully, they weren't. Yeah, well, they, yeah. they, they were, they were, well, they were the on, ones... Hold on, hold on, Tommy, Tommy, let me finish, please. No, but hold on. They were, no, but hold on. Those same ones, Matt McGlone spoke... 
look out about those people, the ones in the associations and the ones who are on their free tickets and are on the gravy train. Correct. Okay. Correct. And, and so there's the same ones who are doing it, and they're just now bloggers. They call them bloggers now. So, and when something needs to be put out and it can't be handled by the PLC, then they've got their favourite bloggers who spin and spin right. and spin on their behalf. So there's no change there, right? And then they'll turn no, around and say, No, but there's a division, Tommy, and you know that. Yeah, there's a division. And the real fuck. hardcore fans, the real ones, right? Got behind the club. Got behind the movement, didn't they? I was one. Yeah? Jesus Christ, I came down from boarding school and got my money out of my bank, my whole savings. I was only like 16 odd or whatever and stood and fucking put my money in. All of it. To get shares. Yeah? I was in tears thinking that Celtic was going to die. I didn't even know what... I couldn't even imagine my life without Celtic. Bear in mind, I hadn't grown up with the glory years or anything. My whole teenage experience of supporting Celtic was fucking... The football was chronic, the results were chronic, but the camaraderie and the support and the belief of what we were, yeah, now, but hold was on, amazing. The, fit, the, fit, the football wasn't all that chronic. I remember coming back up and singing Happy St. Valentine's I'm Day. The Valentine's I'm, I'm you there the Valentine's Day massacre in 1992, where we beat them two 0 and then we beat them three 0 the week later, all holding up red cards because they were massacre, you mean. The what? St Patrick's Day massacre when we beat the Huns two 0 in the cup. Was it St Patrick's Day was it? I don't know. St yeah, Valentine's St Patrick's, and then two week, a week later we. <laughs> well, so St yeah. Paddy's Day well, massacre. Well, yeah, yeah. you're right. I was doing in England and right. I was commuting back up at the time, right? But but you said there it was dire stuff. We had a wonderful team at certain points. We had wonderful players from Paul McStay, Peter Grant, John uh-huh. Collins. Yeah. We, we had good players, but we just, we were cheated. We were cheated because if you look at the teams put against us, uh, bring Sean in here if that's all right, Richard. But Richard, uh, sorry, Sean, see the teams from Tommy Burns and Lou McCarry. And all the, all the teams that we had, okay, we won hee haw, but no, oh, we can be put... was a cock. I know, but but but, but, but and Luke, Liam Brady, but now it's been proven that for the thirty years that David Murray was in place, we were cheated one hundred percent. Surely, Sean, mm. this is what Celtic should be chasing and fucking fighting for. Do you know one justice, Sean? Do you want justice, Sean? I would like justice, but. We're just never ever gonna get it. So I think it's just pointless asking for it. How is it? We need to keep fighting for it. That's bollocks. Look at Liverpool what they did with Hillsborough. They fought and fought and fought and fought for years on end. Right, hold on then. Sean, so you're saying then because we've got no chance of getting it, possibly from the powers that be in this country, that we should just keep just Move on and fight another fight, basically. Never, never. Me, it's fee. It's fee. That's fucking the, the point in this country. They're never going to allow us to let them know that they don't have any history. They've got one trophy to their name. <laughs> no, no less. They won't let us go on with it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck's sake, man, I'm just banging my head off a fucking Protestant brick wall. <laughs> don't do that. You're, you're bad enough don't. for your flu. Don't bang your head against the wall. Stay calm. Right. Oh, there's a will, there's a way. But so always you, but hold on, so then. So, see, for this vote... I disagree. For this vote in, in Friday, Sean, for taking it to UEFA... What would you do then? Do you not want us to take it to UEFA and, and, and get justice through UEFA? I'm a wee bit behind what I am there because I was trying to listen to what I just said there. What, what was that about UEFA? I said, do you not want the Celtic fans to vote for the resolution to take it to UEFA? Because do you not think that it's worth pursuing for justice? That, you know, do you, do you not think it's worthwhile chasing Rangers down to UEFA? Who's Rangers, Tommy? 
All right, fucking all cool. When when see this resolution, <laughs> the the resolution that has been put out there is to do when all co Rangers played in the Champions League when but Celtic... Apparently they don't owe any money anybody, so... I know, but hold on, the resolution... They've, is... they've never been known in the Champions League either. I know, but... So the problem is, Sean, they're still using the old club's name, though. That would be the point in principle. Well, on the year before they went out of business, they played in the Champions League without having their proper tax return being done, and it was signed off by their best friends in the SFA. The same best friends in the SFA who were complicit in a 10-year period, but I'm allowing them to get away with dual contracts, which were illegal also. So whatever way you mm-hmm. cut it, fuck the liquidation part. They've cheated, and the government, the SFA government, is no fit for purpose. So by... Peter Lawwell sitting taking his 30 shekels of silver like an Uncle Tim and fucking saying, oh, I'm part of the SFA. He should be fucking sitting outside it and saying, this whole shit organisation is corrupt. And not only that, we're going to grass up the fucking bastards who have committed this. And if it means that Scottish football has to get shut down, then that's the Armageddon that we should be fucking wanting. Because when that happens, then Celtic can go and take their football to fucking elsewhere. Because I hate Scottish football because, A, what Sean says there, what is the point? Are we going to get fucking justice? If you want justice in this country, you need to be fucking radical. You need to be fucking standing out there and saying, look, fucking John uh, McLean Tommy, style. Tommy, can I tell you something? Oh, you need if to be fucking take... radical. If you want something to happen here, you need to be fucking radical about it. You can't sit there. Tommy, can I tell Pamsy, you something? Namsy, Pamsy, lefty, lefty, fucking sitting there. Oh, let's worry about what these cunts will say about us. Oh, let's worry about these fucking bollocks. This is the fucking bottom line. The bastards. Tommy, would you shut custodians. the fuck up for two minutes ah, and just shut let the fuck me speak? Up. We've been shafted by the <laughs> fucking powers that be that run our club. Yeah, and it's Tommy. time for a fucking coup d'etat. It's starved them out. It's fucking right, shouting right. down. It's say, listen, you dirty. Bastards, you have lost the fucking plot. You're taking a million pounds, and there's cunts fucking starving. Get a fucking grip, Lawwell. They're gonna have to drag me out by fucking ten men on Friday mm. by the time I get in there. They're gonna need fucking Ronnie Hawthorne and the whole of the London fucking road police to take me out in my fucking Celtic onesie. I'm gonna be going down screaming about a fucking hell, but a fucking the four locks fucking tugging me down Kerrydale Street to get rid of me on Friday. Say what you want now, bro. I'm calm. All I was going to say is, even at the school I was at, I had to fight tooth and fucking nail. You better because be you couldn't talk to them. You nail. couldn't talk to them. You couldn't talk to them. Okay. All they ever understood, like you said, Chocolate. was confrontation and being right in them. To the point they realised you weren't going to go away. And you weren't going to hide. And you had to be on top of them all the fucking time. And that's what I mean about a leader of Celtic. I want to see a leader running our club, representing me as a fan, that won't take any shite off of the establishment or any thuds in the SFA and laying down the fucking law and sticking to the right principles that the club got founded upon. Because do you know a funny thing? A lot of fans... You there, Tommy? Are you hung up? No, I'm no all there, but I'm here. On you go. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of fans, like Aberdeen fans, Hibs, Dundee United, are like tweeting me or the other guys saying Celtic should be standing up for us. They might slag us, whatever, but they see Celtic as the one... Some of them do, some of them don't, but the ones I've been talking to, whatever... I'm saying, you know, you guys need to be standing up for the right in Scottish football. And my point is, all I want to see is somebody running that club the way that the ideals of Celtic was founded upon and not taking their shekels, as you say. Yeah? 30 shekels of silver. And modern day Judas Iscariot, just like Hugh Keevans. Fucking well, he's just a fucking fud. I just want somebody running my club, yeah, the right way, 
And I want to see somebody that's going to stand up for 